If you've been to Yellowstone National Park in the summertime, you know a couple of things. One, it's beautiful. It's a breathtaking place with lots of interesting wildlife and things to see. Second thing you know is that it's busy. There's a lot of people there from all over the world and that's an awesome thing to see. Um, but it's definitely not as secluded and quiet as you might expect, especially on the main roads. As you venture out into the backcountry, you know, a lot of that seclusion and wonder comes back. But on the main roads, it really gets overtaken by the traffic and the noise and all of those things. Well, something I learned a few years ago is that during the springtime, before Yellowstone opens for the general public, they open right after they've plowed to cyclists and pedestrians only. And over the past few years, I've been trying to go out and ride the roads during this time period and have just never gotten the chance. So once they're done plowing, usually about late March-ish, it's never a set date, um, they will open to bikes and pedestrians before they open in early April. This year, they're opening on the 16th of April. And so right now you can go and ride through Yellowstone National Park on your bike, virtually no cars. There will be some service vehicles out there, so you need to be aware of that. But for the most part, there are no cars, just bikes and people walking. And I went last Saturday and I have to say, it was amazing. So I went ahead and got up not too early. I didn't want to be out there in the cold in the morning. Got out there about noon is when I started my ride. And I rode from West Yellowstone, Montana to Norris Geyser Basin and back. Round trip was about 58 miles. You have the option of riding from West Yellowstone to Mammoth and back, or you could start in Mammoth. Uh, you can access that during the winter actually, and ride to West Yellowstone and back, or you could do it one way. Lots and lots of different options. Um, you could also just ride in from West Yellowstone, do a couple of miles and ride back out. Uh, it's a beautiful experience no matter what your fitness level is or how far you wanna go. It was a gorgeous day and I can definitely recommend that you should go out there and try it for yourself. It was well worth it. from down the Norse Geyser Basin. Took some photos down there and yeah, they got a lot of snow this year. <laughs> But never ridden on a bike, never with basically no cars, and never when it was packed with snow, and it is just gorgeous. Wow. There's a few things to keep in mind, so here are my tips. One, be dressed for any weather. It's high elevation, it's usually above 6,000 feet for most of the ride, uh, it's in the mountains. Weather can change at any time. I started out in the sun, had a beautiful sunny ride, but halfway through actually had a pretty big headwind and it felt like it was gonna storm. So always be prepared. It's spring, it could snow. I brought a raincoat, an insulating puffy, um, some good gloves, and a little hat. But definitely cover all your bases, even if it's a beautiful sunny day, and watch that weather report. Next, I would be ready for any sort of mechanicals that you might face. The roads are all paved and fairly well maintained, but they have just been plowed, so they are gonna be kind of dirty. I saw a lot of people on road bikes having to change flats. So be prepared to change flats, be prepared to fix broken chains, um, little things like that, because there's no services out there. And while there are some service vehicles driving around, there's no real way to have anyone come and get you because the park is closed to cars. So I would just bear that in mind, be prepared um, for the unexpected, be prepared for mechanicals. Next, 
Definitely bring some snacks, bring plenty of water. If you bring a water filter, there's lots of water to filter, lots of access on the Madison River and on several other rivers along the route. So that is absolutely an option. You do need to have a good pair of sunglasses. Uh, even if you don't typically wear sunglasses, remember there is snow on the sides of the road. There's, uh, there's snow-capped mountains everywhere. You're gonna be looking around. If it's a sunny day, it's gonna be very, very bright. So absolutely bring sunglasses. And even if you're covered up, um, if there's anything that's not covered, uh, wear sunscreen. I wore a long sleeve shirt, uh, full finger gloves, and then I forgot to put sunscreen on my calves uh, that was uncovered for my shorts, and I definitely got sunburned. And so would highly recommend watching and protecting your skin because you may not feel like you're out there very long because everything is so interesting. And before you know it, you've been out there four or five hours and you've gotten a lot of sun exposure. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you know where you're going beforehand you are almost certainly not going to have cell phone reception. So checking Google Maps isn't really gonna be an option once you're in there. There are good signs in the park. However, you need to know that you can only travel between West Yellowstone and Mammoth. You're not really supposed to be on the rest of the park roads. And when I was there, those roads weren't physically blocked off and there wasn't a lot of signs indicating that you shouldn't be going down them. So you need to know where you're going ahead of time so you don't get lost out there. End up in an area of the park that isn't safe um, for cyclists and, and pedestrians yet. So just bear that in mind, know where you're going. Next, I did notice that the bathrooms were all still locked up and closed. Many of the bathrooms were buried in snow. And so just bear that in mind, there's not gonna be a lot of access to restrooms. That, that may change as they get closer to their opening date, but I'm not sure. So be prepared that there may not be public restrooms available throughout the park. The park service and uh, most people would recommend you bring some bear spray. It's probably not gonna be an issue, especially if you go on a Saturday and you travel in a good group, um, but those predators are out there. Uh, definitely keep your distance from wildlife because they are wild animals. They're beautiful to look at, but again, they do pose some risks. So go ahead and follow the rules. Check out the information on Yellowstone National Park's website and just have a great time out there. This is a great opportunity and I really hope they continue to do it um, indefinitely. It was a really great program. So thank you to Yellowstone National Park and thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next time.